your word will come out as anointed word. It is the anointed word of God. Father, it is the word of God. It's not the word of man. So your word will come out as anointed because it is the word. Father, you told us that the word is speak. It shall not come back to you void. It will accomplish the purpose for which you are sending it. So, Father, your word will accomplish its purpose in the life of your people to break every hold of the enemy, to undo every heavy body. Almighty God, thank you today. Thank you for deliverances for your people, oh God. Thank you, Father God, because your light shall shine in all our ways. Your light shall shine in all our ways. And we'll know the right thing to do at the right time. We'll know the next step to take in our life and destiny. Most high, thank you. Glory be to your name forevermore. In Jesus' mighty name, we we'll pray. Amen. Amen. You will be seated. God bless you. That's what you should Oh, Father God. Guys, I hope you had a good time. I hope everybody fasted. I don't know how I can explain it. It's like a purging. I don't, there are so many things that needed to happen. And God just did that thing. Just break. And that's what I'm talking about. The deliverance from oppression. Praise the Lord. Deliverance from oppression. That's what God is all about. God does not want his children bound in any way. God does not want it. And the, the truth is, as the Bible says, We'll get that as scripture that we'll use throughout the past again. Isaiah 58, um, from verse um, Isaiah 58, 6, from verse 6 to 9. You know, God doesn't want this for us. God wants us to be free. Uh, in John, uh, Luke chapter 1, you know God there. Luke chapter 1, it says that you will, that after delivered, that you will deliver your, your children so that they can save you. The purpose of God is so that we're delivered to save him. God doesn't want any shackle upon his children at all. If you're a parent, it will hurt you. Praise the Lord. To see any, your child struggling under a body. And that's why I'm going to read that scripture again. Um, Isaiah 58 from verse 6. It says, um, from verse 6. It says, is this not the fast? You will say, why am I still talking about fasting? You will understand as I go on. Because it's not going to be a one-off for you. Praise the Lord. It's not going to be a one-off for you. Praise the Lord. You will know the need for this. Anytime in your personal life you take a fast of consecration, a fast, anytime you notice something funny going on, you just take a fast and break the bonds of wickedness in your life. Praise the Lord. You notice I'm having a particular dream to so, um, conse 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 or, you know, consecutively. The reason why the enemy is doing I told us here that the reason why the attack has to be like on, ongoing, one after another, is the enemy is trying to wear you down, it's trying to break your, your resistance. Will you allow it? No, you have to stand your ground, you have to fight. And the reason why we are learning today is so that you understand where fasting comes in the journey. In the, in the journey. Now, he says, is it not the fact that I have chosen to use the bonds of wickedness to undo the heavy body? Do you see that? To undo the heavy body, to let the oppressed go free and that you break every yoke. Praise the Lord, that's the purpose of fasting. We've mentioned it here, it doesn't move God, but it puts you in a position. Remember, we are given authority. If God gave you authority, you expect God to do what He has given you the authority to do. That's the prayer that does not work. And that's why it seems as if things are happening in our life and keep going on in our life. Because God is expecting you to do what He has authorized you to do. You are telling God, do what He has authorized you to do. Do you understand me? I give uh, you my key, my car key, to drive. And then, I'm now saying, ah, what can't I, no, no, I can't drive. I, you, you can't drive because you've given somebody the authority. God is limited by what he has set in, in motion. It's the principle God set in motion. You cannot change the principle. If God authorized you to take certain action, and you're not, the problem is that we stay longer in that situation, and it will not be a portion anymore in the name of Jesus. God expects us to take our place. Brethren, God expects, and it's not just our life. Please hear me, Freedom House. It's not just because of us. God is going to use us for people. We are going to go out there and let your prayers go free. It's not just about us. Praise the Lord. But then if you, know, if you don't even know how to set yourself free, how can you, not, how can you give what you don't have? You are being pressed in the dream in the night. You are, you are changed from pillar to post. How can you go? Do you understand me? What, would you, what is your testimony to tell another person? Yeah, I was having this experience. But God stepped in. So that same God will do the same for you. Do you see how this thing works? Praise the Lord. That's why God is training us. And please, even if it's not for anything, the times we are in, we are in what? Dangerous times. You will not be a victim. Your family will not be a victim in the mighty name of Jesus. But don't expect God to do what he expects us to do. That's a prayer that is not answered. That's why a lot of God's children, I mentioned it here, that God says, why is the enemy getting 
more results. When we have been given the armor, we've been given the name of Jesus, we've been given the blood. God said that because the enemy is one one committed, number two, discipline. Number three, organized. My children are not so. That's why he's caused, he will not score again against us in the mighty name of Jesus. That discipline, whether you like it or not, this pastor, you will take at least once a week, take a day, your own consecration fast. It's not something that we call it here. Because we have to be on top. Am I talking to somebody? We have to be on top. We have to take over the yoke, the, the dominion that Jesus has given us. We have to be in charge. It's, it's an aberration that you are always catching up after the enemy. Catching up. You play catch up. Because he has finished the work and then you are uh, asking for the deliverance. Um, uh, no, it's supposed to be, you are to be on the offensive. Not play catch up. You will understand. You are to be on the what? Offensive. And because you are in your place, before it happens, God will tell you, my child, go this way. This is where the enemy is trying to come in now. Are you understanding it? You block that hole through prayer and fasting or whatever it is because you are your spiritual man is alive. You block it and you won't even see it. Do you see? But our problem most of the time, most of those children, is that we are playing catch up. And thank God for mercy because He will still deliver us. But we are not supposed to be playing catch up anymore. Praise the Lord. So, deliverance. Then again, what does fasting do? And these are the two areas I'm going to mention today. Verse 9. He said, Then your light shall break forth like the morning. Your light shall do what? Break forth like the morning. Your head really shall spread forth speedily. Where the enemy thrives is in darkness. As long as that place is dark, he will try. Whether it's in whether it's in a direct affliction of somebody, or if it's a dark area, you've not received revelation of the word of God on it. We are going to talk about both. What do I mean? The truth, you know, is what will set you free. He said, We shall know the truth, and the truth will make us free. If you don't know the truth in that area, there will be trouble. Do we understand? Where do we get the truth? The word of God. Revelation from the word of God is what gives us the truth in any situation. So once the light of God shines in any situation, the enemy side is broken. So what does he do? He tries in darkness and he prays that you don't come out of that darkness, but it's over. It's over. By reason of this fast, the light shall shine upon all your ways in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. The light of God shall shine upon all your ways. Let's take some uh, scriptures upon the, for deliverance. Let's go to Deuteronomy 33, 27. Shall be delivered, and the captive of the mighty, mighty shall be taken away. 
I will contend against them that contend against you, and I will save your children. That's our God talking. That's our God. So, okay, I'm the one that did this. Maybe I didn't do this. Maybe I God now also gave you a scripture in the Bible to say, see, yeah, that's for you. Praise the Lord. So God wants you delivered. God wants you free. Praise the Lord. He wants you free. Praise God. So, now, we'll take an example from the Bible. Matthew 17. Let's go to Matthew 17. We're talking about deliverance from oppression. Two things that work in this area why we need the fast and live a fasted life. It's not just a one off. Are you there? 14 to 21. You said that. At the foot of the mountain, a large crowd was waiting for them. A man came and knelt before Jesus and said, Lord, have mercy on my son. He has seizures and suffered terribly. He often falls into the fire or into the water. So I brought him to your disciples, but they couldn't heal him. Jesus replied, You faithless and corrupt people, how long must I be with you? How long must I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. Then Jesus rebooked the demon in the boy, and it left him. From that moment, the boy was well. Afterward, the disciple asked Jesus privately, Why couldn't we cast out that demon? You don't have enough faith, Jesus told them. I told you the truth. If you had faith, even as small as a mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, Move from here Stop to there. there. You are reading a version. I want us to read a, 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 a New King James version. I'll read it from here. So Jesus said to them, You know they were asking the question, Why couldn't you cast out this demon? Jesus said to them, Because of your unbelief. Because of your unbelief. What is the subject here? What did Jesus say is the cause? Unbelief. Is that not so? Because of your what? Unbelief. Now, for I say, I sure I sure I sure I say to you, If you had faith, have faith as a must ask you, no matter how small your faith, okay, you can move mountains with the little, the most little of it, okay. So, and it will move, and nothing will be possible with you. So, it's not the size of your faith, it's the purity of your faith. Faith that does not have unbelief, okay. So, what you're asking me now is it possible you can have faith and at the same time, unbelief will come and negate your faith? We are going to get examples from the Bible. Praise the Lord, and we'll see where fasting comes in in this situation. You can actually have faith. What did Jesus say? Oh, you of little faith. Oh, faithless generation. How long? Remember when Peter was walking on water and he began to sing. What did Jesus say? Oh, thou of little faith. Wherefore did you doubt? So Peter had faith, but doubt came to counteract the faith. So you can have faith. And the truth is, your faith level is not the same every time. There is a faith that we are giving because he said, God has given to every one of us a measure of faith. Okay? But the measure, how much is activated in your life is how much you're using it. How much you're connecting with it, with fellowship with God, study of the word, do the things we are talking about, the spiritual disciplines will connect you to that faith that you're already giving. Do we understand? You see, everybody is giving. The people that you see are walking mighty signs and wonders. They have exercised their faith more. Basically, that's the difference. They've exercised. Everybody is giving the nature of faith. If you remember uh, Galatians uh, 5, it says, In your spirit, love, gentleness is the fruits of the spirit. Ah, is that also? Faith is included. It's the fruit. It's already inside of you. And then Romans says that God has given to everyone the nature of faith. What makes the difference between A and B is how much they are exercising. Exercising what? Their faith. So, my prayer is that Freedom House will be a church of church, faith giants who will do exploits for God in the mighty name of Jesus. So, now, he said, why could you cast that? Jesus said, because of one belief. For I said, now he says, now he says, however, this kind of what? Remember the subject. What's the subject? Unbelief. That's what Jesus said. Unbelief. This kind of unbelief does not Go out except by prayer and fasting. Why is this this kind of unbelief? See, if it's this kind of demon, then fasting and prayer, nothing can take it away. If the blood of Jesus, the name of Jesus, will not take any demon away. Because some people have taken it as this kind of demon. If any demon 
that your fasting, the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus can never take away. Yes, your fasting can still not take it away. Do we understand? Because your fasting is your own input to it, it's not your work. What drives out demons is the, the authority we have been given, the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. They must obey that name. For there is no other name given among God whereby we must be saved. He said, in that name, every name must bow. In heaven, on earth, we need the earth. So if the people does not bow to the name, nothing else can, he cannot bow to any other name. Do we understand? So it's this kind of unbelief. Now it puts the war back in our thoughts. How do I get rid of this unbelief then? That's what fasting comes in. Do we understand? This is the reason why after you are fasting, you're, you're a bit more prone to believe God for stuff. This is the reason why after you're fasting, that thing that is tormenting you because fasting does two things as I mentioned here. Light comes in that situation. And once light comes, <laughs> the enemy will pack his own and go. Two things. Do we understand now? Two types of them. Uh, now, let me tell you about the, uh, the, the, why the apostles had weight. Let's go to, um, let's go to Luke 9. Luke 9. So, you see that they've done, they've cast out demons before. They have. It's not the first time. So, that's why they're asking Jesus, what happened here now? What's the difference? Luke 9, what is this? Can you, uh, Then he called his 12 disciples together mm -hmm. and gave them power and authority. Over all devils and to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. And he said unto them, Take nothing for your journey, neither staff nor scrip, neither bread, neither money, neither have to coat a piece. And whatsoever house ye enter into, there abide, and there is the path. And whosoever will not receive you, when ye go out of that city, shake off the very dust from your feet. For a testimony against them. And they departed and went through the town, preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. Mm -hmm. Now, preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. Another place is told, they came back to Jesus. One of the other gospels say, Since uh, uh, Jesus, even the demons are subject unto us through your name. So, this is something they are doing. It's not like they've not done it before. Have we understood it? Even the demons are subject up to your what? Name. And Jesus said, ah, it is a giving. And the whole system has left the fall down from sky. Don't rejoice that he's subject to you. Rejoice that your name is written in heaven. In other words, he said, no, it's nothing. That is the, your right as a child of God. They must be subject to you through my name. Do you see? So now, these are the people who are promising. So they're asking Jesus, who happened in this? The enemy, if you read that story further down, the enemy played the same type of play with the disciples. You know what he did? Immediately he saw Jesus. He started manifesting again. Through the child on the floor, the child became acrobats. Do you understand? And it is what they saw that brought unbelief. And they felt hopeless in that situation. They have felt helpless. Because they were seeing some manifestation. And that's where the true type of unbelief come in. And that's what we want to share. There is natural. Natural, um, no, first of all, unbelief. There are three types. Anyway, unbelief from ignorance. You don't know the word of God. Once the word of God is preached to you in that situation, you are you receive it and it works for you. Some people will come and they hear for the first time. God does not want you to be shackled by the enemy. And they go home and say, No, 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 Satan is near you today. From now on, I command you in the name of Jesus. Get your hands off my family. Get your hands off my life. Do you understand? Then another one. Unbelief from wrong doctrine. You know now, even as we are talking, now, there are some Christians who do not they do not believe that they don't believe in divine healing. They don't even believe in miracles. They say it's fast away with them. If you're that kind of, I'm sorry to use the word, dead. If you're that kind of, if you're sick, there's no hope now. You just get ready and make your way. Is that not so? Because if once the doctor tells the person is over, <laughs> because you are able to hear it is what makes you. You shall know the truth and the truth will do what? Make you what? Free. Do you see? So where you go, we are just talking this morning about testimonies in this church. And the sister was observing that is is the grace upon here. That grace is only from what you hear. The word of God. That's why you can have testimonies. There are some places it doesn't work that way. Praise the Lord. 
So what we're saying is that go to here. So if it is wrong doctrine, for example, or the other word from ignorance, it's simple. Once the word of God is exposed in that area, brethren, the, the truth is, once you hear the word of God in that area, and the word of God is quickened, you receive it and you get your breakthrough, or you begin to stand your ground. The third one is the most difficult, natural unbelief. What you see, what you taste, what you feel. They saw this boy performing. Natural unbelief performing. They saw this is the reason why some people want to hear certain words because you've been conditioned. There are certain words, they call it the big C. There's nothing, there's nothing beyond with, 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 impossible with Jesus. The same Jesus we can connect with with headache. It's the same Jesus. Please, are you telling me that God's power is limited for C, big C, cancer, and therefore headache is easy? No. It's because we have been conditioned based by experience. The many people that are putting them in this way, time will come, I'm telling you, brethren, when that seed will no longer be missing. Even medically, as the medical breakthroughs come, and you hear that, oh, uh, this person had it, they can survive. That hold of the enemy on that world will now be torn about. You understand it? Because you now know this is natural unbelief. Natural unbelief. As they saw that demon performing with the, throwing the boy around, they said, no, this one is too much. So, that's what Jesus said. This kind of what unbelief. So, what does fasting do for you? Fasting tells your flesh. Please, flesh is not simple. It depends on how you use it. It's just our kind of nature. What God has put in us to connect in the material world. If you don't have senses, you can walk into fire now and you'll be destroyed. Is that not so? But your senses, your, 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 your sense of uh, feeling, will tell you this is hot. Is that not so? This is hot. Don't touch it. Your sense of connecting will protect you. There are so many things. So it's not simple by itself. But the problem is that it has to be exercised unto godliness. You have to train yourself. We are talking about fasting now. Do you know that if you make this fasting like a lifestyle, your body will no longer rule over you in that area? Because you have told your body, see, it's not every time you get food. Today, we are connecting with a higher food. Man shall not live by what? Bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of our Father. Today, the food you are getting is the food that proceeds from God. Spirit man, you need to be fed today. I want you to be more robust than my flesh, and something will stretch. So when you have fasting, it's no longer a job. Do we understand? But you see, if you don't practice it, if you don't do it, if you don't discipline yourself, then it becomes a, a it becomes something that you may have to you, you will not struggle with it again in the mighty name of Jesus. So what we are saying is that the natural unbelief is where fasting comes in. It tells your senses. We have five senses here. There is a sixth sense. The sixth sense is called the fifth sense. Body, listen to the word of God. You listen to the word of God. It's not, it has nothing to do with it. I want to ask you something. If you did this fast, when you were fasting and praying, please, did you feel minus the hunger in your tummy? Did you feel anything? If the fast is proper, all you feel is hunger. Or you don't even feel anything. You may pray, but it's not like you felt in your goose temple come over your skin. Do you understand me? Why? Because faith is of the spirit. It has nothing to do with senses. Faith is what? Of the spirit. It has nothing to do with what, I, what you feel, what you don't feel. Meanwhile, something is happening. You are training your body to respond to, not, to that system that has nothing to do with physical pain. Do we understand? That's what fasting does. You are training your body. You are training your senses. Now, the second bit, which will take some of the pain, is uh, that fasting causes your light to break forth speedily. It causes light. It causes light. The enemy cannot try when there is no darkness. That's why everything that is done, they do it under the cover of light. Even in our lives, as long as you don't understand, as long as it's shrouded in darkness, as long as it doesn't reveal to you why you feel certain way, why you do this, and you make sure you don't discover he has authority over that area. But no more in Jesus' name. Let's go to uh, Matthew 4, 16. 
Matthew 4, 16. Because this is one of the ways, many, many ways of God's deliverance. What did he say? The people who sat in darkness saw what? Great light. Please read the rest. And to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, light is sprung up. Light is just sprung up. Okay? People that sat in darkness. These are scriptures you take for light. Light must come in all of your situation in the mighty name of Jesus. Why does this happen to me all the time? Light, I command light in the name of Jesus. And to hear my voice, light comes into all your situation, all the dark areas of darkness in the name of Jesus. Now, he says, all to them that sat in darkness, light has come what? Light has come. Light comes. Light comes in the mighty name of Jesus. Psalm 18, 28. We we'll quickly take these scriptures about it because I want you to connect with it and you stand by it. I command light. And the beautiful thing we are going to find it. Once light comes, <laughs> darkness must be. The light shines in darkness and darkness cannot overcome it. You see. Once the light comes, everything changes. Yeah, read that one. For thou will light my candle. The Lord my God will light my darkness. That's your promise. That's your promise for those areas. The Lord my God will do what? Enlighten my darkness. The Lord my God will do what? Enlighten my darkness. Now, uh, 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 I don't, do we still have time? Yes, we still have time. So, uh, James 1 5. James 1 5. Uh, when we get uh, John 8 12. If any of you have wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men. Liberal, then upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. Why are we talking? Because the wisdom of God comes with the light of God. You see, when you say, I now understand this, light has come in this situation, is that not understanding? That's the wisdom of God. That's the ask God questions. Praise the Lord. You read that, uh, uh, John. Yes. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. Mm -hmm. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, mm. but shall have the light of life. He that followeth me shall not do what? Walk, walk in, darkness. in darkness. That's your scripture also for confusion. He that followeth after me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of what? Life. The light of life. Now let's read it from here. Psalm, Psalm 139. I'll tell you what light. Because light and salvation goes together. And if you read Psalm 27, verse 1. Somebody get it well, I get it. Psalm 139. Psalm 27, verse 1. Are you there? Psalm 27. Just read Psalm 27, verse 1, and then I'll go through. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Okay? Read it a bit down. Go to the next one and you stop when I keep going so that you When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, come upon me to eat my flesh, they stumble and fail. Praise the Lord. He says, even though a host will accompany me. Go to the next one, number three. Though my host should come against me, my heart shall not fear. Hmm. No more shall no rise against me. In this will I be confident. Mm -hmm. One thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek after. That I'll dwell in the house of the Lord. Is that? Yes. Okay. So the one of one, one of the things here says, no host will encamp against me. I will not fear. I will not fear. I will not fear. No host will encamp against me. Please, when you have time, read that Psalm 27. It's awesome. It tells you, do you understand? You will not fear why. It talks about life later again in that scripture. It talks about life. Why? Because the Lord is your light and your salvation. That's the beginning. Because the light is your light and your salvation, then you will not fear even if a host is, compound, is uh, surrounding you. You will not be afraid. Now, let me read Psalm 139. I'm reading from uh, 7. Here. He says here, Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are dead. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are dead. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, the darkness, surely the darkness shall fall on me, even the night shall be light about you. He's talking about God. Okay? 
God, there is nothing hidden with God. God does not, not even darkness becomes light with God. Now you are the child of God who is light. Do you see the reason why darkness has no authority over you? Do we understand? Do you see the reason? It says, indeed, that darkness shall not hide from you, but the right shines in. But the light. Okay, so the light becomes day with God. The light becomes what? Day with God. The light, the light becomes day with God. Praise the Lord. Why are we mentioning darkness? Because as long as, as long as, but no more. No more. No more. If I share with my testimonies, because there are some issues of our life we don't understand. Why is this so? Why is this so? And God, in His mercy, will just open the curtain for you. And that's the end of that situation. Amen. That's the end of that situation. God will just open the curtain and say, do it this way, or do it this way. Or meditate on the scriptures. Because the scriptures also, when you contact the scriptures, you are contacting what? Light. When you contact scriptures that God did not. The scriptures is light, you are contacting light. Praise the Lord. That's why you will not play with these two things. The discipline we are talking about is discipline in the word. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. Discipline with let your body no rule over you. Begin to rule your body. I don't know what fasting will be for. Every one of us is different. For somebody who is ill, who is believing God because they still have maybe they are experiencing ulcer. It may not be a turn around. But a time will come when your faith will come and say, no, 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 now nah, this one, you cannot say my body anymore. Get out. That person that cannot even fast to two up because of ulcer, they'll find themselves fasting how many? Six to six. And then they cannot bring you back again. Praise the Lord. What we're saying is that what God has told us to do is not a one-off. Brethren, please continue in your personal life. Continue in your personal life. Because God is in a hurry to do a work. God is in a hurry to do what? A work. I remember somebody very close to me. When I kept praying with her, I said, please, God, what God is ministering. He's in a hurry to do certain things. You have fasted. You have prayed. Because she was in Nigeria then. You have fasted. You have prayed. And now this is the time for your manifestation of your miracle. Don't, don't, uh, don't snap back. Don't be, uh, what's the word? Um, you know, like, um, just like that. Please don't say I'm in a new place. Let me prove this place. No. God wants to do a work. Luckily for me, luckily for her, she took my word. She connected back to all the places she connected before. Even her local church, everything. That's the testimony I was sharing with you. Before we know it, God gave her a job that people that have come before don't get. And in her area, normally when you come to a place, you know what I'm talking about. The tendency is that you do other things to manage until. But God gave her exactly the job in the profession she's in. Why? Because she obeyed the word of God. Don't rest. And I'm speaking to every one of you here today. Don't rest. Please, don't let the momentum stop. You don't understand what we're talking about. God wants to do a work. Hello? God wants to do a work. A work. A fast one in your life. Don't delay and say it's God. God is waiting for us to be in the proper place so that He can do what He wants to do. Don't delay because with our hands we can delay God. Through our um, um, uh, how can they, um, now that the battle is over, those that are at ease in Zion, there is no ease. It's already prophesied, and I know the world will go into global recession. Then will God make a difference? You determine whether you'll be among those who are under recession or when God will use you to make a difference in the world. And say, for my children, there will be light in their ways, in their dwellings. Is that not what God did in Goshen? There was light in Goshen. When the whole other, other region was uh, where, where immersed in darkness, there was light in Goshen. That will be your question. Shall we stand up and begin to pray?